Hi everybody, this is Jack from Rambling Raconteur, and it's March 31st, and it's just after 11 p.m., and I have narrowly finished reading a fifth uh, mystery book in March 2020, James Crumley's The Wrong Case, uh, part of the vintage contemporary series, which I think great, like, uh, you know, specific common type of cover. You'll see another one of these um, when I give some similar reading experience selections. Uh, Crumley is a fantastic writer, very dark writer. Um, I read The Wrong Case about 10 years ago, and it's stuck with me ever since. I've read about five of his books in the meantime. I've reread some of those. This is my first time rereading The Wrong Case, and it, it's, uh, it's his first mystery novel. So Crumley had, uh, you know, he had, he had some experiences in the army. He went to college. He got an MFA with the Iowa Writers Workshop, and he had published a book about his military experiences, one one to count cadence or one count to cadence, and it didn't, it wasn't particularly successful. So he ended up being given a copy of uh, one of Raymond Chandler's books by a friend, and who suggested, hey, maybe you should, you know, maybe you'd like to write a mystery, and this is the book that came out of that, is the wrong case, and he he crumbly developed sort of two detective characters. One is uh, the character from the wrong case, Milo Milo Dragovich. Uh, the other is C.W. Uh, Shugru. Milo is more sentimental, a little bit more romantic. He's less willing, you know, he, he's interested in finding out someone's story. He's interested as a private investigator and in, like digging at the details a little bit. Shugru is uh, much more sort of like post Vietnam paranoid, like much more violent. Um, and there's one book where they actually work together called Border Snakes. Uh, but you, you see, they're, they're very much like two sides of the same coin as characters, as detective PI characters. Crumley lived in uh, Montana, I believe, Missoula. I may be wrong on that. But uh, his, his, his books are set in the Mountain West. So even though Wrong Case is almost totally in a town that is becoming a city, uh, it used to be sort of like a big logging town. There's, um, there's a state college nearby and it just it, it's it's very much um, a town coming to grips with the latter half of the 20th century in the U.S. and sort of the the sins of the fathers and grandfathers coming home to roost in, in what's happening in this town and how life is changing. Um, Crumley is very interested in illuminating the bar culture that exists throughout the Mountain West, where you have small towns where there's not necessarily in in some people's minds, there's not necessarily a lot to do beyond being outdoors or, or working with your job or spending time with your family. And so there are many bars. Like there's a statement in, at one point about this town where there's like 20 bars in the town. And a lot of the scenes just take place in these bars. Milo has a second PI office in a bar. And so you have this sense of, um, of that type of sort of subculture. Uh, but but there's some really beautiful writing. The mystery itself is not the most intense. You know, there's a uh, a young woman shows up to Milo's office and wants to hire him to uh, look for her missing brother, who then turns out to be dead. It looks like this is written in uh, published in 1975. It looks like the younger brother he sort of had had you know moved west and would dress like a cowboy and you know had a beard and carried guns and is obsessed with like the mystique of the old west in the 1970s mountain west now as the towns are growing up it's not the wild west nobody's riding horses uh people people have you know modern communities mo modern lives but this this young guy is kind of interested in those things so his sister wants milo to go find this guy of course he ends up being dead and slowly we see that there are connections between his death and some of the crimes that are going on in the city right now. And Milo just keeps peeling those back. And then there is sort of one final like <laughs> uh, slip of the knife twist on the final like five pages. But overall, it's a it's a worn down, beaten down guy who sometimes, you know, is, is barely able to stand up or walk or drive sometimes trying to do right not for the first time in his life but for the first time in several years um it's populated with characters who who are like comical uh sometimes very sad 
Um, there, there's a lot of, like I said, there's an obsession with the bar culture, and so there, there's a lot of scenes set in the bars, and there's a lot of characters who you see, like, the effects of alcoholism or the effects of drug use, and it's not romanticized at all. Um, but it's also the, the humans are not condemned as, like, bad people or evil people. And so I wanted to give it a sample of his writing. Uh, let's see. Here we go. So this is a, towards the latter third of the book. Um, what makes you so sure that somebody killed him? I asked as gently as I could. You still don't believe me, do you? She asked as she turned around. Her face was shadowed, but I could see her eyes, which were oddly blank. Do you? It could have been an accident, I suggested mildly. How many times do I have to tell you that he was not a drug addict, she said, her voice as empty as her eyes. Love, you may have to face the fact that he was. Never, she whispered, and even if he was, it was because somebody forced him, and that's the same as killing him, isn't it? I guess so, I said, not wanting to argue with her stony grief. You know something you're not telling me, she said, her voice trembling. No. No what? I'll tell you someday, I said. When? When you feel... When you don't feel so strongly about his death, I said. People never understand, she murmured. And so it goes on. And uh, in the, the, the final paragraph of that sequence of dialogue is, And with his name, my safe world ended. My castle came tumbling down into the stagnant waters of the moat. And in confusion, it began all over again. All the questions, those with no answers, those with too many. The next morning, I woke early, showered and shaved, then tried to eat, but my appetite failed me. The bacon smelled like dead pork, and the eggs accused me with their fierce yellow glare. I had a piece of toast and a shot of whiskey in my coffee, drank the coffee and smoked a cigarette in the bedroom doorway, watched the lady sleep, wondered where to begin, how to keep the lady on a more permanent basis, but I didn't know where to begin. And then one more, so you see sort of that, that sense of there's, there's quick Chandler's cardboard Hammett style uh, dialogue, but then there are the, these metaphors that just kind of spring out of nowhere uh, that really aspire. Uh, whether they succeed or not, they aspire. And so, uh, if he had left it at that, I might not have understood. But he raised his empty glass and pointed at the vista. The fields, a lush, verdant green, grew dark with shadows, nearly as dark as the pine-thick ridges, but the sky above still glowed a bright daylight blue, a single streak of clouds, like a long trail of smoke, angled away from the horizon, flaming a violent crimson at the far end, as if it had been dipped in blood. But the middle was light pink, and the end nearest us was an ashen gray. A lovely view, isn't it? And so you, there, there, Crumley has this real obsession with just how beautiful the mountains are there, uh, despite everything else that's going on. So I, I do recommend it. He, uh, his other series with Shigru starts with the book The Last Good Kiss, I think a lot of people prefer the Shugu character. I think a lot of people, and rightfully so, The Last Good Kiss is a stronger novel than The Wrong Case. But The Wrong Case was my introduction to Crumley, and it's an inter excellent introduction overall. Some other books that sort of jump out um, for Crumley sort of being in that tradition. So as I was rereading The Wrong Case, one of the things I realized was that this unnamed town that Crumley's Milo character inhabits could very much be like, the 1970s version of Personville or Poisonville from Dashiell Hammett's Red Harvest, where there's just endemic corruption. There are people who are trying to be honest, but so many who aren't. Um, in terms of the the family dynamics and sort of the the obvious Chandler influences, The Little Sister by Raymond Chandler jumps to mind. And Crumley's sort of hard-boiled writing, to me, follows that thread from Hammett, Chandler, uh, up to Ross McDonald, but sort of the more violent, the more realistic, and, and I, don't, I shouldn't say realistic, the more violent side, though, is in that Mickey Spillane, Mike Hammer, you know, model, where from Hammett and Chandler, there, there's a hint of violence, and then with Spillane, it becomes much more obvious, and with Crumley, like, the fights are visceral, um, it, characters are, like, bitten or gouged, once, once Milo gets beaten up, 
there's another 70 pages of him having to walk around with like cuts and bruises and stitches and he's not feeling good or happy. Um, in terms of other sort of like 1960s, 1970s crime novels that fit in with the wrong case, um, of course, I thought of uh, Robert Stone's Dog Soldiers, which is, this is a fantastic book and a harrowing book. And this, this is probably a better book than The Wrong Case, but if you've read this and you really liked Robert Stone, um, you might enjoy Crumley. I think there are some sensibilities that are similar. Uh, a, an author who I don't like most of his books, but I liked this one and it was weird, was Don DeLillo's Running Dog, uh, it, which again kind of has this just strange feel. Um, Fletch by Gregory MacDonald, much, much more interested in sort of the humor than in the crime and poetry that Crumley is, but sort of that outsider, uh, counterculture perspective on crime. And then the one that really springs to mind of like, the feels like it could, they, they could have sat down at the same bar and, you know, switched manuscripts and it would have still made sense and worked is Newton Thornburg's Cutter and Bone, uh, which is kind of a nightmare and harrowing. If you saw True Detective season three, I think Cutter and Bone is the one book that uh, I kept thinking about as I watched that series last last year. I think it was 2019, early 2019. Um, and so Newton Thornburg's a tremendous writer, but, but Cutter and Bone has sort of a California, but they also go into the sort of Midwest. I can't remember if it's Missouri or Arkansas, but they go over into that part of the country. And so you get some some aspects of, of pseudo rural or set urban but very small urban areas uh, with sort of a wide expanse and the idea that you know these are mystery novels written in the 70s right as the U.S. a lot of people in the U.S. are starting to lose trust tr trust in institutions and I think Crumley and Thornburg both write about characters who have very much lost that trust in institutions and feel like maybe they need to be the institution that restores the trust or that uh, because there's no institutional trust, their, their own code, as compromised as it may, may be, is, is giving them some type of purpose, almost this like existential PI type idea that's never explicated that way. So this is my, my fifth mystery to finish out this month, The Wrong Case by James Crumley, and a writer whom I love and who I highly recommend, whether it's The Wrong Case or The Last Good Kiss, highly recommend. So Thank you, everyone. I hope you all are staying safe, and I'll see you later. Bye.